So how does a firm with some market power determine the price that maximizes profits or the price to charge for its product? Let me take, take you back to Mike, the owner of the Black Dog restaurant in Champaign, Urbana. And what he tells you is the way he prices his sandwiches. He said that he basically determines the cost of, of making the sandwiches uh, for him, and then he multi multiplied that times three in order to determine how much to charge for the sandwich. So what he's basically telling you is that the, the price he charge is whatever it costs to make that sandwich, a marginal cost, times some kind of factor that in his case is three. Let's call that K. And that factor he's probably getting from industry standards. Uh, so if you know what the industry standard for, for that number to be, then you can use that. But it's actually important to see what, what is going to determine that number. And we can call that number the markup because it's essentially the, um, the addition to marginal costs um, that's going to determine the price. So it's the markup over, mar over marginal costs. So in order to understand what determines this markup, let me ask you this. Who do you think will be able to charge a larger markup? A farmer selling corn or a cell phone manufacturer selling smartphones? And you take a moment to answer this. You can pause the video and then come back and see what the answer is. Well, it's not very difficult to imagine that a farmer selling corn probably has very little markup, if any at all, and that's because the farmer works in a very competitive industry, and uh, uh, the elasticity of demand for uh, the corn that he or she sells is actually completely flat, or is perfectly elastic. So when the company is actually facing a lot of competition and the elasticity of demand for its product is very really elastic, the company is going to have a very small markup compared to a company that works in a less competitive environment, and the, the company's own elasticity of demand is more inelastic. So what we're saying is that the price elasticity of demand is what determines essentially the markup the company can charge. So we can have an equation that kind of summarizes all that we're saying and say that the markup is always going to be equal to 1 over the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand minus 1. And to see that this, this uh, equation kind of works, try to calculate, take a moment now to calculate the, the markup for two companies. One with a price elasticity of demand, let's call that A, of, uh, of two. And another one with a price elasticity of demand, it's company B, of five. And remember, the price elasticity of demand is always negative, but we are using the absolute value here to simplify our work. So which, two, which of these two companies, the one that has a price elasticity of demand for its product of two, and the other one that has a price elasticity of demand for its product of five, will be able to charge a larger markup using this formula? So notice that company A is going to charge the, the following markup. This, this equation will be 1 over 2 minus 1. So this markup essentially is going to be equal to 1. And for the company with a markup of, with a price elasticity of demand of 5, the markup is going to be equal to 1 over 5 minus uh, 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 fourth, which is about 0.25. So notice that the company with a more price elastic is going to be able to charge a less, a lower markup than a company that has a more inelastic demand. So this equation works very well, and now we have a very, uh, very good relationship uh, in an equation in a very formal way of uh, price elasticity on demand and, and the markup. And that is that uh, the markup for any company is going to be determined in part by the price elasticity of demand of a product um, and the more inelastic the price, uh, the more price inelastic the demand is, the more, the larger the markup the company will be able to charge.